in the latest installment of a special segment that we have been doing on automotive safety, we talk about brakes and braking systems in this episode. And we have come a very long way on this road, right from the asbestos-based braking systems to brake by wire. The world has really moved on. And braking systems are something that not a lot of people think about, but they are very important, extremely crucial and a big safety item in your car. They are tucked very neatly in between your wheels, but they stop you in the nick of time to avoid any massive issues or injuries and impacts. So they are not to be missed at all. The development story of brakes and braking systems is also very fascinating and that's exactly what we are trying to decode and deconstruct in this special package. Take a look. In the early 1800s, the first mechanisms to slow the momentum of a vehicle and prevent uncontrolled motion were tested. Today, over two centuries later, from the early drum brakes to modern day discs, brake system evolution has improved safety and reduced the risk of car crashes across the globe. Now, hydraulically actuated disc brakes are the most commonly used stopping system in modern motor vehicles. But have you ever thought about the first vehicles to get disc brakes? The development of disc brakes began in England in the 1890s. The first caliper-type automobile disc brake was patented by Frederick William Lanchester in his Birmingham factory in 1902 and used successfully on Lanchester cars. However, the limited choice of metals in this period meant he had to use copper as the braking medium acting on the disc. But copper wore off quickly, making the system impractical. In 1921, the Douglas Motorcycle Company introduced a form of disc brake on the front wheel of their overhead valve sports models. Douglas described the device as a novel wedge brake working on a beveled hub flange. This brake was fitted to the front and rear wheel of the motorcycle that Tom shared rode to victory in the 1923 Senior TT. Successful application began on railroad steam liner, passenger trains, airplanes and tanks before and during World War II. In Britain, the Daimler company used disc brakes on its Daimler armored car of 1939. It was necessary because of the epicyclic final drive in the wheel hubs, leaving no room for conventional hub-mounted drum brakes. The American Crossley Hotshot had four-wheel disc brakes in 1949 and 1950, but these quickly proved troublesome and were removed. In 1953, the Jaguar C-Type racing car won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It was the only vehicle in the race to use disc brakes, developed in the UK by Dunlop, and the first car at Le Mans to ever to average over 100 miles per hour. Then, the same year, 50 aluminium-bodied Austin Healey 100S models, built primarily for racing, were the first European cars sold to the public with disc brakes fitted to all four wheels. However, the Citroën DS became the first sustained mass production car to use modern automotive disc brakes in 1955. The DS featured caliper-type front disc brakes and Citroën sold 1.5 million units of the car over 20 years with the same brake setup. A four-wheel disc brake system was introduced with the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray in 1965 and most cars in the US switched from front drum brakes to front disc brakes between the late 1970s and early 1980s. MV Augusta was the first to offer a front disc brake motorcycle to the public in 1965. It was a relatively expensive MV Augusta touring motorcycle and its disc brake used a mechanical brake linkage. Disc brakes were most popular on sports cars and sports bikes since these vehicles demand more from their braking performance. But safety concerns gradually made disc brakes better and the more common form in most passenger vehicles. However, many entry-level vehicles still use drum brakes on the rear wheels to keep costs down. In 